What up? What up, everybody? It's Big Cheds. I am uh, uploading um, the Twitter spaces to YouTube for safekeeping. This is episode 35. Um, I have quite a few to get caught up, so um, I'm going to get right into it. Of course, you know you can get uh, my trading wisdom on Amazon. You can get trading quotes on Amazon, and I'm a founding analyst at Bitcoin Live. Um, let's uh, go ahead and just get this going here. Get this party started, so just hang in there. Get this started, folks. Um, thanks for hanging out here. Ask me anything, episode 35. Um, I'm on Twitter at Big Cheds. Catch me on YouTube at Cheds Trading. Um, there's tons of free educational stuff there for you. Make sure to check that out. Um, attached to the spaces at the top, there's three tweets. One of them is uh, if you're looking somewhere for somewhere to trade, check out Bing X. They're an excellent exchange. I've got um, you know, a link there for you. I've also got a link, another tweet, which is the new follower packet. So that's going to get you textbook recommendations, some learning resources, um, just some warnings as well. I'm not on Instagram or like, you know, Telegram, Discord. People will impersonate me and stuff. So um, check out the new follower packet. And then, of course, it's the Bitcoin Live five-year anniversary sale. Bitcoin Live is the best in-class educational platform for crypto. It is the best team in the world that studies crypto. I'm a founding analyst. I've been doing market reports for five years. Um, and I have another one coming up tomorrow night. I do it Wednesday and Sunday night. Um, and, you know, kind of in, in the um, in the spirit of that, this week I'm doing a lot of spaces. I'm doing spaces uh, pretty much every day this week. And I'm streaming on YouTube um, as well five days this week. I did a YouTube stream last night. So I'd encourage you folks to check it out. Um, the format of these spaces, this space, the uh, Ask Me Anything, is I like to hear from you. Um, I bring you into the conversation, you ask questions, and we talk about things. And for the people who are listening, listening, it adds value. Um, this goes into the Twitter playlist, Twitter spaces. So this is like number 34. we got a great library of, library, um, of these built up. It's still going to take a little time to fill the room. We've only got about 40 people here um, so far. So I'm going to send out a tweet. Um, while I'm getting things started, um, I need you folks to hit that button in the bottom left, which says request to speak. Um, you know, we need to get the, you folks all lined up so I can I can answer your questions. So uh, and especially if you've never um, joined one of these, you've never spoken before. It's a great opportunity for you to ask um, ask me anything. Really, that's what it's all about. So hang on for a second. I'm going to send out a tweet. Um, to remind people to join, let's see, share via tweet, join, and ask questions, BTC. So yeah, um, I'm basically going to wait. Now the next step is we're going to wait for you folks to um, join the spaces and to, to, to um, request um, to speak. And once we get a few of you kind of lined up and ready to go, then we can start this. Um, it's not so much, you know, it's not so much about me just talking and and riffing and talking about the chart. Um, you can get that on YouTube. You can get that on Bitcoin Live. This is this is interactive. Um, you know, this is about me talking to you and having a conversation. So again, um, hit the button. Folks, you can hear my voice, right? Um, hit the button in the bottom left, which is a request to speak. And uh, we'll get you up here in the conversation. Once we have a few people waiting to speak, then we'll, uh, we'll get started. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> we got one coming up, so just hang on. We're going to get a few more. Um, just hang on there, uh, Matthias. I'm going to add you up. Just wait wait a moment if you don't mind. Folks listening, I want to hear your questions. Um, it does. Don't feel like it's a dumb... Hey, Matthias, hold on, brother. Um, don't feel like it's a dumb question. There are no dumb questions. We're just here hanging out, and I'm literally... I'll talk about anything, pretty much. Um, and if I don't have expertise, if I don't know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you. Um, you know, I'm going to be honest about that. So... Doka, hang on, buddy, as well. I'm going to mute you for a second. Wait till I call you folks. 
Um, so folks, hit that button in the bottom left to join the conversation. Just a, a quick reminder, um, check out my YouTube at Chad's Trading. If you really want to learn how to trade, um, a great place to start is the playlist called Masterclass Webinars. I have three beginner and one advanced webinar. I'm also um, the author of Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. That book's done really well. It sold over 15,000 copies, which is kind of crazy. Um, you can get a third of that book for free on my YouTube channel at Chad's Trading. So check out all that. Check out the free educational stuff. And definitely the Bitcoin live sale is ridiculous. You get a quarterly membership. You get the first you get the first three months, you know, of a quarterly membership for twenty seven dollars, which is kind of crazy. Um, I'm surprised that the admin set the pricing that low, but I think they really just want to cast a really wide net um, and give people the opportunity, maybe folks who would maybe not otherwise um, have the opportunity. So please hit the button in the bottom left to request to speak. Um, let's start out with Matthias. Matthias Hogland. What's up, buddy? Hello, boss. Hey. Hey, I, I don't really have any other question then. I want to ask how can we pay you? Because I want to support you because your book actually was probably the main thing that made me transition to being profitable. Wow. That's really nice of you to say. Have you, um, have you, try, have you checked out my third book, the one I published in December? Uh, no, but I will. But I want yeah, to... I'm really proud of that. Trading quotes. I'm really proud of that book. And I, I narrated it too. Like if you're into Audible and book on tape, you can just listen to it. Yeah, that sounds great. I actually bought two of uh, Trading Wisdom just to try to support you more. But do you're you have so any nice. way we can like, give yeah, back so more look, to you? you? Just hanging out is giving back. Just being by being part of the conversation. Um, you know, you're adding value because, um, you know, without, without students, you know, a teacher can't do anything without students. So it's great to have you. Um, I would just encourage, check out Bitcoin live. I'm incredibly proud of the work I do there. I do a twice a week full market report and I haven't missed a report in over four years. Like even when I'm sick or on vacation and I'm traveling, I stop and do a report. So, um, you should, I mean, the sale right now is unbelievable. So if you haven't joined already this, you know, that this is the time to do it. So I would check out Bitcoin live. Okay. interest in that i will definitely do so i just want to thank you again for uh, for your book oh. it has helped me a, hey, a ton oh that's so good i really love that i love that feedback um i'm working on my fourth so I, I i published trading quotes in december i'm working on my fourth book called trading journal which is essentially about like teaching people how to use a trading journal and why they should use it and then it's actually like um empty pages for you to fill it in so i'm working on like my fourth book as well so Keep an eye, eye out for that probably later this year or early next year. Yes, okay, boss. That was all for me. I will definitely check them out. Thank you. Thank you a Thanks, lot. Thanks, man. All right, take care. Yes, bye-bye. Join the conversation. Thank you. Join the conversation. You don't have to just tell me how great I am. You can, you can challenge me. You can ask me questions. I'd love to hear from you. Hit the button in the bottom left. Um, Doka, Doka Mook. What is up, Doka Mook? Yeah, I'm good. Good evening. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Good evening, sir. Yeah, but I, I, I'm saying good evening because I'm in Nigeria, so mm -hmm, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. evening. <laughs> how's the weather? Yeah. Is it dry? Is it, is it rainy? Well, how's the weather out there? Well, um, I'm in the federal capital city, Abuja. It's raining in Abuja. It's been raining for days nonstop. Wow. Raining cats, dogs, and other assorted <laughs> primates. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's good for the crops, right? It's good for the crops. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. All right. I, I, mine, mine is... um. Mine is hybrid, you know, it's like a question and a contribution together. Okay. And um, the, the, the question, obviously, is the direction of Bitcoin. And I yeah. just want to say what I think, and then I just want to hear your two cents about the matter. Yeah, please. So I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking at the untapped liquidity around um, 28.3. Okay. I think, I think, I might be wrong, I'm still a newbie at this, just over a year. Yeah. This. I think um, BTC will go for that liquidity over there at 28.3. Why 28.3? I'm seeing... Why 28.3? Like, what's that? Why that level, if I may ask? Yeah, because I'm I, I'm seeing like they're, they're like double weeks there. They're like double weeks over there. That I, I, I think, in my little knowledge, signifies liquidity. You know, mm -hmm. I just believe that. I, I'm thinking if that doesn't happen, then there's a second scenario, in my opinion, that um we are going to go for um the the new high that was created i think yesterday 27.6 and then maybe try to bounce off any 
resistance that it might get and also there's a resistance i can see as are also as well on 28.3 mm -hmm. you know so um i don't know these are my thoughts i don't know what to think about it am i wrong am i well so here's a couple am i, am I wrong am i hitting it well you know i mean who's to say who's right or wrong until we you know see how the price reacts but i will say i'm not really identifying or seeing 28.3 as a level at this point um you know, for me, I'm focusing, first of all, I, I focus on horizontal levels, right? Horizontal zones. And, yeah. you know, I'm watching three areas really primarily. I'm watching 30.5 above, which is the overhead supply or resistance. Yeah. And I'm watching the 26.8K support zone. And then I'm watching 25.5K, which is the neckline of the, of the inverted head and shoulders we completed on the weekly chart. Yes. So, like, what's what's Bitcoin doing? Well, it's in an uptrend. I mean, how do we know that? It's on the weekly chart. We have a rising MA200, right? A rising simple moving average, right? That's the trend. You have the price above it, so you have a confirmed uptrend on the weekly chart. So, the weekly chart's in an uptrend. We are consolidating um, for sure, given, you know, we had that, that beautiful move from December through April where we went, you know, essentially we doubled you know, 15 to 30K. And that type of a move needs some time to pause and consolidate. So what we're doing is we're consolidating above that breakout level, which is 25.5. Yeah. And so you've got minor levels like 26.8. That's a level. And you've got that overhead level right around 30 to 30.5K. Um, yeah. I think, you know, with there's a lot of stuff I could say. I, I will say that people, everybody kind of draws a different level because they have a different methodology and that's okay. Because if we all, you know, if we all approached it the same way, you know, it'd be really boring because the price yeah, would it is. move. So, like, you know. I want to say, I just want to say how right you are because I'm looking at my chat right now. I just loaded my laptop and I yeah. marked the exact same levels you just called. I marked the 25.5. Mm. We almost went there, right? We almost yeah, went we there. Almost during did, the yeah. But we just yeah. stopped at 25.8. And then yeah. I also marked 35, coincidentally. I marked it as well. But, good. I mean, we went, you know, so I think I think you were right, you know. And well, then that's the good. That means you're listening to the price, which is the first yes, step. Yes, yes. You want to let... You wanna I'm looking at my charts now. They are all marked on my chart. So, yeah, I think you're right. Beautiful. You know, you yeah. want to... You, what, we, what you want to keep in mind is a lot of the time there's not a trade. You know, much of the time there's nothing to do because the price will be kind of chopping around in a consolidation zone. And ideally, yeah. you're waiting for the price to interact with a major level. And that will allow you to structure your risk because you have yeah. you can very easily say, like, here's my trade idea and here's you know how it fails. And mm -hmm. a lot of people just get into trouble thinking, oh, it's an uptrend. I'm just going to buy some here and let it ride. But, you know, every time you, you, you risk your hard-earned money, you need to have a good thesis, a good trade idea behind that. And um, it's easier to come up with a plan when the price, you know, is at a key level. So I'm just kind of waiting for the price to interact with, you know, one of those areas. Yeah, that's that's wise. And finally, before yeah. I go, I know there are others waiting. There sure. is um, there is a Bitcoin event coming up on the 18th of this month, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Um, I, oh, I, like I a think... Miami, like a conference. Yes, or yes, yes. The Miami event. Yeah, yeah I saw it on Bitcoin Magazine on Twitter. The verified handle Bitcoin Magazine on Twitter. So yeah. I don't know if that's going to have any effect on price. Is that enough? I mean, we won't know. I mean, the thing about the thing about events. First, well, a couple things. I mean, it's a little bit cynical, but it, it does always seem like Bitcoin goes down during conferences. I don't know why. Um, okay. maybe it's just, um, selective memory or maybe that's just what people say. So that's what we believe. But, um, if you're worried about a future event potentially affecting the price, just wait and see what the price does. I mean, either yeah. hold support or not. It's not, there's not too much value in trying to plan it or think about it ahead of time. Yeah. Um, because it may or may not have an impact. So I really don't know. I'm not, there's nothing like in my analysis that would factor that in. No. <clears throat> have you been to my YouTube yet? Have you watched those videos? Well, I have. I have. I mean, good. I subscribed. I watched the videos that were really, really helpful. You're good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank consider you. consider checking out Bitcoin Live. The sale is really good. It's really All good. Right. All right. Thanks, man. Jared. God bless. Good to hear Thank from you. you. Thank you for stepping yeah. up. Thank Folks, you. just hit that button to request. I'll bring you into the conversation in order. Next up, we have, I believe, uh, Amir Kakar. You are up next, Amir. Hi, man. What's up, buddy? Hello. Is my voice good? It's okay, yeah. Your voice is good. Yeah, it's probably better than mine. 
So what's going on? I really, I really appreciate all your work. Thank you very much for all of that. I've made Thank you. two Thank questions. You. Uh, one of them is about your contour scenario. Well, you uh, talked about this a bit. But I would like to ask if the breaking of the consolidation we have just about current crisis and the <laughs> inverse, no, the normal head and shoulders that Peter Brandt tweeted later. Yeah. Before. Do you You're think talking about the head and shoulders in the daily chart, right? The head and shoulders yeah. in the daily chart, yeah, yeah. a, neck, a neckline think, around like uh, 268. Yeah. Yeah, and we are just below it. And do you think is this maybe an indication of? lowering the speed of the uptrend you were talking about? I don't think we really need to pay attention to the head and shoulders in the daily chart. First of all, it looks like um, a deviation where it broke below the neckline, the confirmation line came back up above it. Um, but the reason mm -hmm. why, more importantly, the reason why, or maybe equally importantly, we don't really need to worry about it is because we already have the larger inverted head and shoulders in the weekly chart, and we're already just watching that neckline at 25, 25. 25. Yeah. So it doesn't really give us anything. It doesn't really gain us any value to identify this newer, smaller, lower time frame head and shoulders because you're kind of, it's going to lead you to want to draw a, a target or a measured move. And the problem with that measured move of the smaller head and shoulders is it would take you below the neckline of the 25.5. So you can't do that. You can't overlook key levels of support, right? It's an obstacle in the way of the measured move. So... You know, again, we're just back to simply watching the 26.8K zone, the 25.5, and the 30, you know, 30.5K zone. So it doesn't really gain us any value to identify the newer, smaller, lower time frame head and shoulders. Okay, can I ask the second question? Okay. Yeah, it's about the risk management side. And I recently understood that, well, we say keep the losses small, but the yeah. ways of that we can make the gains bigger. And maybe um, I learned recently that maybe building a position, maybe, uh, maybe if you want to short, short the sweep, then add on the break of a level below that to make the gains bigger. Do you have any other? So there's a couple things. Um, so you really, you know, you know, you it's a, it's okay. You can add to your winners. Like if you have a trade idea and you're long on something, and then that price breaks uh, breaks resistance, and it goes higher, you can actually add to that position when your trade idea is confirmed, right? So it's fine. You can add to a winner, but you don't want to add to a loser. You don't really want to be kind of building a position in a trade idea that you've gotten wrong, right? Because every time you enter a trade, it needs to be like a definable trade idea. And, you know, you're long because, for example, like support's holding at 25K, right? So when so if support breaks, you have to exit that position because your trade idea failed. You can always re-enter if your trade idea becomes revalidated later. Um, you know, it's tricky. I mean, you, you, you know, some people, and there's different styles of trading. Some people will try to, to aim for that big home run, build up a huge position, swing trade. You know, but that's that's a, that's tough, and it goes against a lot of what I've learned and I teach is that you really need to be defining your trade ideas and cutting your losers ideally as quickly as possible. Um, so that's something that's something you want to continue to focus on doing is making sure every time you enter a trade, you know why you're entering and you know where that where um, that idea will fail, right? But it's okay, yes, it's okay to add to winners. I think that's fine, and you can continue to do that. Yeah, thanks. All right, time, man. Time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Check out my YouTube, okay? I I watched all of them. I <laughs> no way, no way. There's I like pitched, hundreds of I videos. I all of them to my sister. <laughs> wow, awesome. Um, three, four times every video. Thank you for yeah, your time. Wonderful. Thanks for well, well check out time. check out Bitcoin Live. We have I have the book. Sale. I have the victim. Yeah, thank you. Good, great. Thanks for for stepping up and joining the conversation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, plumber, All right. you're up, buddy. You've been pa you've been patient, plumber. What's going on, bud? Plumber pleb. I think Can I've you had hear you me? on before. Yeah, I think I've had you on Can before. You hear Can you hear me? Yeah. What's up, man? All right, great. Um, I just got a question. Um, I've been learning about risk management and limiting your losses, and yeah. um, yes, that, that's kind like of just the, the technical most important stuff. Thing. That's the most important right. thing, really. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 the big thing I've been learning the past year or so as as 
Bitcoin just kind of tanked over the past year. Sure. Um, but yeah, my, my main question is, one of your quotes, I love it, is uh, buy when you're fearful, sell when you're excited, do nothing when you're bored. Yeah. Um, yeah so how cool. do you, hold on. So how do you, how do you reconcile that with once you gain experience and, and confidence, yeah. how, do, how does that transition happen where it's like you're no longer going based off your emotions mm. purely? <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, I, I get it. So it doesn't matter how, how good or how much of a veteran you are. You're still going to be an emotional creature because that's what we are. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can look at a chart and say, man, you know, we're up at 300. And if it ever get down to like 150 again, I'd love to buy there, you know, right at like yeah. a, week, a, a monthly or, or like a major high time frame support level. But then like the market collapses and the price gets down there. And especially if the price gets down there quickly, it's really hard to pull the trigger. Yes, that's where I'm at. <laughs> you know, it's really hard to pull the trigger. So you have to, a couple things. There's a couple things. Um, smaller position sizes will actually help you follow through on what you know to be a good trade idea. So another one of my quotes is if you buy something and you immediately feel uncomfortable, then you probably have too yeah. much money in it. Yeah, yep. So a lot of what, we're do, what we do as traders is managing and observing our own emotions, which is why I talk about in like the trade journal. You, know, yeah. you write, that, write down how you feel when you enter a trade and how you're feeling when you exit a trade. That's like a key component. So a smaller position size will help you pull the trigger. And even if you know it's a good idea, it's still you still might get scared and tap into that fear and think, you know what? I am scared here. Maybe this really is a good idea. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you got to kind of um, second and third level thinking yourself at the poker table type of thing. Right. Yeah. So All right. that's that's the trick um, and the ways to make it easier. As I said, smaller position sizes, man, I'm telling you, that just makes everything easier. It really, really does. Yeah. All right. Well, what that else helps. you got? What um, else you got? What else you got? Basically, basically over the past, uh, I don't know what it's been since we've gone from the high of thirty one thousand. Yeah. I've uh, I have a trading amount of money that I have. And then I have some stuff that I'm just holding, but the trading stuff is, um, I, I sold at 28,500 weeks ago because I was just, it was a certain amount that I, I kind of wanted to keep at least that much. And I was just scared. And so I was like, all right, yeah, I don't know yeah. what I'm doing very well. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull this out. And then once I learn what I'm doing a little bit better, uh -huh. then, then I'll go from there and trade with a little more confidence. And so smart, I've been patiently, been patiently watching, price come down from 31 Oof. well if i pay i patiently watched it go from 28.5 up to 31 and didn't fomo in mm -hmm. good um mm -hmm. as i learned all these other techniques of like looking for hammer candles and outside of the bollinger band and all this other stuff good um and now i've been patiently watching it drop lower and lower and lower all the way to the 200 week and i was yeah like i was telling you i was just scared <laughs> i was like gosh like uh, but this that's is a good. Point being where scared think... is good. Being scared is good. It means like you don't want to. You don't want to like blow your account. Yes, that's what. I, that's the most important thing. I, like I said that I've learned this past year. Because <laughs> I because yeah. I watched my account go down. Yeah. Way too sure. much a few times. No. You know, it's hard confidence. Like if you have if you don't have confidence, you you ain't got nothing too. So find right. ways to get your confidence by. Um, you know, here's another thing. Like. I recommend people like take their watch list and cut it. I one of my, uh, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm parodying my quotes, but yep. instead of, instead of buying another monitor, cut your watch list in yeah. half. Yeah, right? I like and, that. I've, and I've done that. I've only stuck with uh, just trading Bitcoin in the past. That's really uh, good. You, you're developing muscle so. memory. You're developing muscle yeah. memory. And that's going to allow yeah. you to have confidence and, and pull the trigger. And you can contextualize volatility um, and pull right. the trigger when it happens. And, and then trust in your ability to limit your risk. If the trade idea fails and just know that it's okay right. to, 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 to have a loss, a small loss, you know, it's a learning, a right. learning opportunity. Right. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. Good. Good. Have you seen my YouTube? You watch that stuff yet? YouTube? Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of them. Uh, I can't remember which ones I haven't and haven't. Is it four C four uh, episodes in the master yeah, class? Watch the master class. Yeah. And then um, yeah. like th these Twitter spaces are really good. Cause you can listen to like these, this like question and answer type of uh -huh. format. I've got like 30, 30 of them up there. So 
um yeah. you'll probably enjoy that and definitely man if you ever thought about bitcoin live now's the time this right i'm thinking about it it's i mean it's i i can like it's the best thing out there there's nothing like it so i would check okay it out. so question about it question about bitcoin yeah. live yeah um you say you give a market report. Is that yep. uh, on sort of a broad spectrum of things or is it just Bitcoin or what is that? So what I so first of all, when you sign up, you get access to everyone's content, right? Not just me. And I'm just one of like okay. seven analysts. Um, yeah. and, and when you sign up, you can go back and watch, you know, 500 videos from me alone. Twice a week, I do a full market report. I look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then I look at like a, a list of like 10 altcoins I cover. And then I, I do altcoin requests from the members. So and that's okay. twice a week and it's twice a week. And it doesn't matter if like nothing's happening. I still sit down and do a report because, you know, I'm trying to teach the students to continue to keep practicing and keep working at it. And um, I mean, like literally no matter my, my, my wife knows, like it's time to do a video and like she leaves <laughs> me alone and I do it. So twice yeah. a week. All right. All right. Check, check it out, man. There's um, and there's links to free reports too on Bitcoin Live. You can see what I do, like what it's like. Oh, so, well. Good point. I'll have to check that out. I Definitely that check yet. it out. Definitely check it out. I'm really proud of what we do there. Cool. Thank you Thanks, so much man. for all you do. Thanks, man. Good to talk to you. Yep. All right. All right. Let's keep it rolling here. Uh, and folks, you can join the line of speakers. We have a couple spots available. Quick reset. I'm you on uh, Twitter. I'm, I'm Big Cheds on YouTube. Cheds Trading, author of Trading Wisdom. Um, you can get a third of that book for free on my YouTube channel at Cheds Trading. Check out the Masterclass playlist. Um, I'm a founding analyst at Bitcoin Live. Again, twice a week, full market report. Um, and we have our, like, it's, it's, it's an unbelievable sale. It's totally ridiculous. Um, you, you, can, you can try the first three months for $27. It's kind of crazy. Because even like, honestly, at regular price, it's really underpriced. It's an unbelievable platform. Super proud of the work we do. Um, but I want you to join the conversation. Next up, we have, uh, I think, Petrich. Petrichor. We've, we've had you before, man. What's going on, Patrick? Hello, Victor. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for your uh, content. And uh, uh, so I have a question about uh, funding rate and open interest. Okay. Uh, do you think it's a good idea to uh, trade? Uh, uh, first of all, I want to ask you, what exactly determine the, uh, determine the price, future, market or the spot market uh, especially i'm asking about bitcoin what's your question can you rephrase that so i could a little bit again? so so I, I would like to know uh, what exactly determine the price the future orders like if the spot, open interest spot. is spot. what determines okay. the price is just uh, you know the ebb and flow of of, of uh you know buy and sell pressure and based on kind of uh, uh, the available liquidity in the order book so uh, just out of curiosity, because uh, like in the bull, bull market, most of the people are longing the Bitcoin. Yeah. And, and yeah. like most of the people also are buying the Bitcoin on a spot trading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how it's possible that the broker can pay the profit to, to the longers? Um, how, how is it part of the, if, if there's an imbalance between um, a lot of times you'll get people who build up a lot of short interest. A lot of people open up short contracts, short futures contracts, and you get a lot of people trying to short it. So you have an imbalance, you know, kind of on one side of the book, and that's why you have a funding rate going one, one way or the other. Um, and some people actually study that and follow that closely and use that with their trading. I actually don't look at anything outside of the chart. I don't even look at the order book. I don't like to look at open interest. I don't look to... Other than sentiment, I don't like to look at anything other than what's inside the what's called the four corners of the chart because it keeps things nice and simple. And I'm just looking at price relationship to the major levels. And, you know, the more like with like on chain, which is fine. Some people use it. I don't. When you start to look at things outside of simply just the supply and demand, um, it, it leads you to certain conclusions. And then you kind of believe something that will allow you to maybe miss a clue that the actual price is given you, right? The price, the, the, at the end of the day, the current price is what something's worth. Like right now, this second, that's exactly what, what it's worth. That's exactly what it's supposed to be worth, right? There's no such thing as undervalued or overvalued. That, that in my mind, the concept doesn't exist because, you know, everything that's publicly known is built in. It's baked into the price right now. So I like to let right. the price be my fundamental analyst. I like to let the price kind of sort that all out for me. 
And if you want to look into stuff like that, I know Crypto Cred on Twitter has um, some like tutorials on that, on like a funding and open interest and stuff like that. It's 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 I think it's Crypto Cred is is the, the is literally his handle. I mean that's his name. It might just be like Cred Crypto, but it's he's got a couple good educational tutorials on that. What Cred? Yeah, Crypto Cred. Um, he's got some good stuff on like open interest, but I don't. That's not something I I use in my uh, analysis in my trading. Right. Actually, the uh, uh, one of my friends is uh, trading nowadays with only uh, the funding rate and open interest. And whenever it's like the open interest is too high and funding rate is uh-huh. uh, negative, he uh, put his short. And uh, so far, he was quite successful. So I was wondering, uh, good. Good. Did, did you have any experience by trading with... Uh, no, I don't uh, do it that way, and I think okay. the market. I think the market needs people trading it um, in different ways. We can't all have the same approach, right? You have traders who are right, just trade, right. trade Ichimoku Cloud. You have traders right. who just trade open interest. You have traders who just trade based on like the volume profile. Moving average traders, people who just love to trade moving average crosses, stochastics, whatever. Um, I think you have to. I just recommend honestly a more simple approach than a more complicated approach. That's why I like kind of the classical charting, Western TA approach of just price versus support and resistance, maybe a moving average or two. So um, if it works to your friend, that's good. Maybe try it out. But you don't ever let something outside of the chart lead you to a conclusion to where you're now going to ignore when the price breaks support. You always have to pay attention to that, right? Or when the price breaks resistance. That's really all that matters at the end of the day. That's the final answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you, buddy. Check out my YouTube. All right? Sure, thanks. Peace Bye. out. Good to see you. Good to talk to you again. Um, let's see. I believe Mustang Girl is next. Hey, Big Cheds. Um, What's happening? Not much. Not much. Watching the charts daily like you are. Um, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, I, you know, I've been following you now for over a year, and you're amazing. I cannot, like, sing your praises enough, honestly. Um, oh, please go ahead. Please try. <laughs> Not to like, you know, inflate your I'm, ego a little more, but no, you're amazing. And it's I have, too big. You'll blow. Thank I've you. learned Thank so you. much from you and you've honestly saved my portfolio. I don't know how many times. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Thank you. Well, you've done it. I don't want the credit. <laughs> I want you to take credit because you, you're learning and you're trying and you're paying attention. So good job. Um, so a couple of things here. I, I was one of the lucky ones with the Pepe coin. I got in, turned, you know, $600 wow. into 11000 and okay you know i have it sitting there and now you know i i'm fearful <laughs> you know i'm afraid to put it into yeah. anything at this point um sure, sure. and you know i've set some aside obviously for taxes and so forth but you know i, I, yeah. I still want to play and you know sure, i'm looking sure. at the charts yeah. now and, you know i've always been a big fan of you know xrp and litecoin even though they're you know they have their proponents and people who hate them as well but Right now, you know, mm-hmm. looking at Litecoin in particular, it the, the reversal sure. that I did recently just it blew me away, and I feel like I'm too late to jump on the train. Um, what I mean, what train? I don't think it's doing anything. Well, I mean, Litecoin's basically just going sideways. Well, I guess yeah. If you're looking at it, yeah, I'll zoom out a little bit, but it just yeah. I mean, I don't think Litecoin has much of a trend right now, and I don't think it should be kind of putting you in, into a position of FOMO. I mean, um, and it's Litecoin. It like it just disappoints. Like in general, it's not it's not like it's gonna go to four hundred dollars or two hundred dollars anytime soon. Um, I mean, it's still, but you know, so look, Litecoin's pretty easy to play at this point, right? If it breaks up above a hundred, you can go long on it. You know, if it starts to close above the weekly MA two hundred, you can go long. I mean, you look at the weekly chart. Look at where the price found support, January of twenty twenty two, February of twenty twenty two. You know, it did a descending triangle, and then it broke through it in April of 2022. MA 200 weekly. That's where we rejected, rejected in February this year, and where we just rejected. So the price has very clearly marked a line in the sand mm-hmm. for momentum. Like there's just nothing in your in your bones should be like, oh man, I'm gonna miss the move. Um, it just it's and it's got the hundred dollar pivot level too, a nice psychological pivot. Um, you could just literally wait for that. Um. You know, and ignore everything below it. I think personally, it's actually really good advice. It's very sound. Well, yeah, very sound. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you. I mean, what else can you do? I mean, it's um, 
I was like, you like FOMO. I'm like, what are we talking about? Like, because I look at Litecoin twice a week for Bitcoin Live, you know? So I know it's not really, it's just kind of, it's still, it's still simmering. It's still kind of just doing its thing. It's not, you know, there's no trend. It's literally no trend. It's just straight sideways. So, um, what else? <laughs> so that's my thought on that. And then, right? you know, and, one of your yeah. famous quotes is obviously, you know, coins are meant for trading and not for holding. So do you not hold anything at all long term? I have some I have some Bitcoin in Ethereum. Okay. Because, you know, like I, I have some <laughs> coins I've held now for you know, a couple of years and I'm, I'm, yeah. up, I'm up on them. But, you know, it's at, point, it's at the point yeah. where I'm, you know, two or three times up, you know, after the bear market. Whoa, that's really good. That's uh, really good. I mean, if you're here's the thing with like that, if you're up that much, you should be free riding. All right. Completely. Cash where out, you've you've already hundred percent. Because then you can there's no scenario where you can lose sleep on a free riding trade. I mean, it just doesn't happen. You know, it shouldn't happen. Um, I mean, that's like the dream scenario to free ride, you know, and if you if you're in a position where you're able to do that, I mean, you can do it. Pay yourself. Pay yourself for a good idea. Um, it's like you, you have to get that feedback loop going where you start to pay yourself for good ideas. If you don't, you know, you start round tripping it, you lose all the profit and then you just, you're like, what happened? Good point. Good so, point. Well, then uh, I'll yeah. have to uh, take some profit, I guess, here, here soon at least. So, yeah, I mean, I, so for long, I mean, the topic of like holding long term, like I'm not a fundamental analyst and there's some great fundamental analysts out there. I'm not, I just really micro specialize in, in like just the price chart and I found that it works for me. And, um, I found being skeptical really works well. I just assume they're all complete scams. It's all complete nonsense. Um, but if there's a chart, I'll trade it. I'll love it. I'll love it while I'm in the trade and I'll get out and I'll move on. And, um, you know, like if you look at like the evolution of altcoin cycles, like older coins usually don't do well, every, you know, in the newer cycles. It's always the newer coins that do well. So like it, it's almost disincentivized to just hold stuff for the long term. Good point. Good point. Chess, this is why I follow you. Oh, come on. Now. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Check out my YouTube. Check out Bitcoin Live. This is the time to do it if you're not already part of it. I'll team. take some profit and subscribe. How about that? You should. It's only $27 a profit. I think you can handle it. I can it. handle it, definitely. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. All right. That was good. Let's go to um, – and, folks, I'll bring you into the conversation. I'll, I'll do this uh, – I can do this at least another 45 minutes or until, like, people stop requesting to speak. Um, Mahogany Cheetah, we've spoken before, I believe. Hey, Cheds, how you doing? What's up, man? We've talked before, right? Or am, or am I wrong on that? No, nah, I have been on your uh, YouTube though series commenting um in the chat sometimes though. Um, oh, you're the guy. You're the one who's taking shots at me in the chat room. No, I'm just kidding. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, just want to say I'm a fan of uh the free educational content that you provide. I guess one of the questions that I had Good. for you was, um, I love your YouTube channel. Thank you. Particularly the um, long form interview series that you Yeah, do. really good. Are yeah. you going to be bringing that back or what? I mean, I'm not opposed to it, but it's um, it's a lot of work, YouTube, right? And it's like, mm. it's, I don't get a ton of views. And um, like, like mo to do that takes mojo from me, right? And because I, I put mm. my heart, heart in everything. And I really try to save my mojo for Bitcoin Live. I mean, like, because I... I literally don't skip an update. And so um, to like work that stuff in to where I'm trying to maybe work in a YouTube video week, maybe, but mm. um, I do like the long form interview series because I've talked to some really good traders and it's, I, I feel pretty, I feel like I'm a pretty good interviewer and I like just talking to people and there's really great value there. So um, yeah, I mean, if you have an idea of someone you'd want me to interview, maybe I'll do another one and, Try to um you know shoot me a comment or try to connect me. I mean I, I'm I'm connected to pretty much everybody, but um yeah. yeah I'm not opposed to that I guess. Totally yeah yeah um there's like there's just some really good gems in there and also just hearing from other creators and their styles too. Yeah. Um, it's pretty fascinating, but yeah. Anyways, big fan of your content and uh, appreciate what you do and all. Uh, continue spamming your chats. <laughs> Thanks man. Thanks for stepping up and hey, check out Bitcoin Live. This is the time to do it. Appreciate you, buddy. All right. Let's go with uh, Huso H. Huso, what's up, Huso? Hey, what's up? All the way from Edinburgh, Scotland. How are you doing? Oh, no kidding, huh? How's, how's uh, life treating you out there, How's bro? life treating me? It's too cold, man. It's too cold. I just came back from Germany last week. Okay, all I'm right. I'm depressed as fuck, man. 
Oh, uh, no, good. I, I want to go to, I might go to Germany next year. I'm kind of planning that out. I've always wanted to go. I recommend it. I recommend Munich if you like beer. Yeah, I recommend it. Okay. Yeah. So I, I thought, I thought I'd just jump on this, um, this talk show and just ask about what your predictions are for six figure Bitcoin. The latest. My, all right. I mean, you know, predictions are, you know, one of the, one of my, my least valuable things are my predictions because, um, you know, the further you go out in, in time, kind of the less, you know, value it is. But I'll make a prediction just for fun. Um, so what what do you want me to predict? Like when I think Bitcoin hits 100K? Yeah. Latest. Latest? Yeah. Latest. <laughs> latest. Latest, 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 huh? Uh, what are we in? 2023 now? Um, latest? I don't know. 2026? I, I was thinking that as well. Maybe end of year 2026. Yeah. yeah, I think it feels like a 2025 maybe kind of thing. I mean, obviously not this year, and I really don't think next year. But, um, you know, I feel like we could maybe we could make a, you know, briefly make a new high next year and come back and consolidate. I feel like the longer term trend has kind of turned from up only to more of consolidating uh-huh. type of a thing. Um, and so, like, I could, you know, I just see this year more sideways, more churn, and maybe a little bit more push up next year. But it's just going to take some time to digest. And I think people people who are used to Bitcoin dropping 80%, well, the older hats, the older people, you know, used to Bitcoin dropping 80%, 90% and just making a new all-time high. I think, you know, I think we've shifted away from that now um, into a little bit more of a mature market. So I think it's going to take a little, some more time for us to push all the way up there to 100K. Yeah, understand. Thank you. For that. Is that your target to sell? Is it, is it, is it like a, um, you know just a spot to celebrate or is it you know like a target for you i mean I'd, you know what? i mean um, i don't hold much bitcoin um if i'm being honest i hold yeah. two two bitcoins i'll be fully transparent it's on cold storage you can try and hack it you can't hack it on two bitcoins. <laughs> it, what's your seed phrase no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I, yeah so i've got two bitcoin um i do hold a large uh, part of my net worth in xrp um i've been in xrp i've been okay. following the news for about four years um, wow! But the thing with XRP is, this is inevitable yeah. for the lawsuit not to not to be favorable on Ripple's side because there's no rules okay. in America for 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 crypto. You know, um, and the SEC is yeah. going go by the Howey test, which was made in the 1940s. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just um, um, everything in America is just all over the place. But so you think that means that you think that means that so you you're thinking they'll eventually win the lawsuit and then therefore price will go up kind of thing and um, the price the, the I, I mean we would see a pump because we've not seen a, a pump since the SEC brought the case on ripple and um, we will see a pump. Yeah. it could hit all-time high which is around 3.5 dollars but yeah. but um even it, even if it wins tomorrow and it hits 3.5 dollars i'm not going to sell because um i know what xrp yeah. is i know how xrp works i've spoke to people in oh. ripple um like i'm, I'm invested in the right. technology than the price um all right. I could be attached to a bit emotionally, but the, the, yeah, yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't the whole XRP community attached to it emotionally? I don't know. I just, I, I, I hope, I, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope like you, you do really well with it. I just feel like it's a dog. Uh-huh. I just, in my heart, it just, it just feels bloated, and there's way too many outstanding shares. And um, I just, I don't know. I could be so wrong. I'm not a hater. I'm just. I traded penny stocks for a long time and like the scams and all that. Like, I don't know. I just don't, even if that's true and it's used as whatever between the banks, I just don't think that means the token like is going to like reward value to the people who are buying it. Um, I just, I just, I don't know why I feel like it's not going to work out, uh-huh. but I mean, I hope I'm really hope I'm wrong. I just really hope I'm wrong. And, and I hope you, it goes to like a hundred bucks and, you know, and then you can hire me for your company or whatever. <laughs> no, I don't think it'll go to hundred bucks. Um, I'm looking to offload around um, seven, eight dollars. But look, even if yeah. even if worst case, that's possible. That's possible. The yeah, worst comes possible. to worst. XRP loses. They they lose in Supreme Court as well, which uh, Ripple are planning to go to if they lose this yeah. one. Um, I bought yeah. uh, I bought majority of my XRP at twenty one cents. So even if they lose wow. tomorrow, I can sell it all yeah. and I can still make a little yeah. bit of profit. You know. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, well, you know, go go big or go home. So I hope, you know, 
I hope I hope you do well either way, brother. No risk, no rare. <laughs> That's it, man. No risk it, no biscuit, exactly. brother. Exactly. Anyway, good speaking to you. I appreciate your advice. You too. I appreciate you, man. I wish you well. Thanks for telling Thank me. You. All right. All right. Um, all right. We got some speaking slots here available. Um, hit that button in the bottom left, which is request to speak. This is Ask Me Anything episode 35. I'm not just going to sit here and talk to myself. If I want to do that, I could go into a room and talk to myself, maybe live stream on YouTube. But this is Twitter where I'm trying to be interactive. Um, I'll do a quick reset while I wait for you folks to request to come up and speak, ask questions, share your stories, whatever. Um, Big Chad's on Twitter. I am um, the author of Trading Wisdom. 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. You can get that on Amazon. I also just published Trading Quotes back in uh, December. 365 original quotes from me. Um, uh, you can get Trading Wisdom on YouTube. Uh, I've got a third of the book up there for free. Um, great educational stuff. Check out the Masterclass webinar series especially. Um, and I'm also a founding analyst at Bitcoin Live, the best-in-class educational platform for crypto where I do a twice-a-week full market Update, we have a wonderful sale, our five-year anniversary sale. It's ridiculous. If you ever thought about joining, you definitely want to join. You, you'll be kicking yourself if you uh, miss this sale. What's up, uh, Mr. Burnside? Good to see you again. See you around all the time. How you hanging? Hanging in there. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Hey, Were you on, on the road? Yeah, I'm driving, so I'm trying to limit the people. But I was wondering uh, if you could... Um, I know that you are um, kind of strategic about opening multiple positions uh, with multiple entries, uh, multiple take yeah. profits. Um, I was yeah. wondering if you could um, walk me through your stop, stop loss strategy with that. Um, yeah, I tend yes. to leave a lot of money on the table, like a lot of us probably do. Um, and sure, you know, sure, sure. My stop, I, I usually put my stops um, at, this, at the golden pocket on the impulse um, for a trailing stop. And you know, if okay. I get nicked, I get okay. nicked, but I usually lose a third, third of my position that way, or a third of my profit. And so I was just wondering if you could kind of walk me through how you handle that. Yeah. So let's take like a, um, let's take like a theoretical trade where the, the price has established a hundred dollars as resistance and, um, you know, it keeps bumping up into it. And then I, I see it, you know, maybe with like a higher low, let's call it maybe an ascend, ascending triangle we're hundreds at the top and I've kind of caught and I see the higher low and the price is reapproaching the hundred and I'm thinking it's going to break and it breaks a hundred. I take the long. So let's say I, I, um, I set up five positions doing the same thing. You know, they're all going to initially start out at the same level, which is going to be maybe like 95, $96, right? They're all going to start out with that same asymmetric, you know, minimum three to one risk to reward based on the target or kind of estimated move. And, so here's where it gets a little bit more nuanced when the price, if, and when the price rises and I start to get into profit, what I would normally do, right. Is I would say it's got like a mix of big leg up to like 110, 112 quickly. I would probably take two of those five. I would take two of those five um, stop losses and move them into profit. I would take the third one. I'd move it to break even. And I leave the other two of the five back at the original spot. So I'll stagger it, right? And then I kind of, and there's no set rule for exactly how I stagger it um, because it's really based on kind of the the strength of the move. And I'll often maybe I'll put it just below, you know, like if it goes 112 and then I see it go down 106 and then bounce again, now it's at 115. Now I see 106 is a higher low. So maybe I'll move up another stop loss just below the 106 to like 105, 104. So it kind of watch as the new price structure develops and as new kind of like lines in the sand are formed, as new, you know, higher lows are formed. So I'll, I'll basically, you know, I'll, I'll take 30 to 40 percent of that original position, uh, maybe 25, 30 percent. I'll put it into profit initially. Again, I'll leave one at break even and I'll leave two down at my original entry. So that's kind of how I'm approaching it. And then it's fluid based on if I'm lucky enough to, to pick the right you know, direction of the trade. It's fluid as to where exactly I'm moving them, but I'm going to move them up into profit um, and usually just below, you know, some type of a horizontal level. Does that make sense or is that a little bit, a little bit, um, 
No, that, that makes, makes perfect sense. sense. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah, because you know, because I, I trade on on derivatives, you, and you trade on margin. Um, sounds like I need to kind of pivot and uh, start working on margin. It's just you know, enter a position, and you know, aggressive about taking profit and monitoring stop loss. Um, yes, yes. And you know, so often, you know, uh, to, you know, obviously, I think we know to be a profitable trader, you're going to leave money on the table. That's just the reality. Oh my God, you um, have to. Oh sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. It's just uh, trying to minimize, you know, that, you know, the potential, the potential on your P and L when you see your, you know, P and L, yes. you know, glowing green, good numbers. Cool. You know, yeah. what I, what I've been doing lately is I'll close a down position. Okay, cool, I'm content. But yeah. then it runs. You know, it'll just fucking rip the moment I close too. So why don't you just, close you know, half? To, close half. Close half. Uh, I have kids and a job and all that stuff, and I, yeah, I'm 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 intraday. So yeah. it's, fair enough. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, that's you. the thing. It owns your time, right? When you're doing this, it's like, it's, so you got to find the right mix of time frame to trade and how aggressively you trade based on your like life. Do you have to take care of your family too? I mean, there's no, there's no ways about it, you know? So. <laughs> never, never ends, bro. <laughs> it never ends. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, thank you. All right, man. Drive safe, brother. All right. Talk to you soon. Appreciate you, man. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye, buddy. <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin Live's tomorrow. We're going to get, um, I'm going to add some folks, hit that button to request to speak. I want to bring you in in the conversation. Boone, what's up, buddy? Hey, how are you? Like how are you? I'm Hanging. back today. How are you today? <laughs> so um, I did just good, join good. Bitcoin Live this morning. I don't know if you get a notification on mm. your links, so no. people that join. But... Oh, no. Yep. No, I don't. I'm just they. So I'm not even admin. I mean, they just hire me to make videos. So I don't know who who's in. And I just see if you comment on the video and I talk to you that yeah. way. It's kind of the only way. I'll well, know. like I said, uh, I don't know if you remember any of the conversation yesterday. That was a great spaces, by the way. People really asked some really uh, good questions, you know, and you gave great feedback. But one of the Thank you. one reason I joined, too, is because I've I've been on the sidelines for a while just watching you know, I kind of took a break. Yeah. I needed a mental break. And, you know, I've yes. kind of just been watching. So the timing of your Bitcoin live promo is perfect, too, because I'm ready. I think I'm ready to get back in and just get back to trading my levels and in tune with the price action. So I love that. Um, I, I've also kind of tuned out of Twitter a little bit, you know, just because. Good. You should. Yeah. It's noise. I took a break it's noise. For a while. And it's people yelling. It's people yes. yelling. It, and people bragging yeah. and people fighting and it's just it's diarrhea. Yeah. So what one of the things is too with taking that break, you know, I always knew a lot of you know, like you had all the pumpers in there, like the Zach Morrises and all of that. It was just a crazy yeah. Yeah. train crash to watch happening over time. But what I what I've been doing is going back through my feed, going back through my follows and just kind of ditching people, you know, too. I love it. And I love looking it. for yeah. a little more quality uh, content, you know, and people that are more level-headed traders in general. So yes. I think my one question to you on that is, yeah, who I like, if you had to kind of. I'll pin the tweet right now. I'll pin the tweet oh, okay. uh, on my FF. Let me find it. Not to cut you off, but I'm, I'm, I think I know where you're going. Let me find it. Um, so, yeah, like I. I only follow like 200 people. Yeah. I actually have a bunch of them muted just because like um, I don't like want to hear what they have to say, but they're still my friends. Right. Um, right. All right. Boom. I just added to the top. Okay. So look at the top of the spaces yeah, right now. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Look at yeah. that list. I mean, that's super clean. That's real clean TA. Yeah. All those guys. And a bunch of them are Bitcoin live, of course. I mean, because that's, you know, but like that's a great list of TA. And I look for people who are just pure price. Mm-hmm. Um, classical charting, especially, um, you know, mature people who aren't pumping, but they're kind of observing, you know, price relationship to, to major levels and they're educational and stuff like that. Um, so check out that list. That's what, like eight, eight or t eight or 10 names. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really great. good list. And there's other ones too, but that's a good place. To that's start. exactly, you know, where my question was going with that, because, you know, I, I use my charts and, and, you know, my fundamentals in general that I use to trade to get back in. But I'm also just, I've got to just blank out a lot of the noise. And, you know, whereas 
I probably enjoy people's feed. You know, it cracks yeah. me up. It makes me laugh sometimes. It gives me a little break. <laughs> it's also, yeah. you know, it, it's also some white noise that just needs to go. So I found that like, I try you so like with Bitcoin Live. First of all, like Bitcoin Live now, go back. Like, please watch my old videos. Like, yeah. um, I mean, there's some great stuff. I maybe even go back and see how how we I covered like the November top and kind of the price action since, and maybe even go look at the bottom here around fifteen seventeen k. How that was covered, right. um, and then compare it to the style of like Dean and and Peter and Bob, and we just like you know these are like serious veteran traders. Like they've traded like ten years more than I have. I mean, they're just like some really great, great guys, but I don't watch their charts. I don't want to see what they have to say because I want to f- trust my own read. Right. I look, at, I look, I don't look at anyone else's chart read. I don't need them to tell me if it's bullish or bearish. I know because I studied it. I've read textbooks. I did CMT and you have to trust your own feel. You have to like develop that feel and the muscle memory. So that goes to following fewer people, eliminating the noise. And it just takes time and experience to know who's full of shit and who's not. Right. So what, one of the things that really got me into crypto originally was, you know, just trading Bitcoin miners on NASDAQ in general. And I learned everything I could about them, I, all the SEC filings and backgrounds, the CEOs, mm. like I would just take a deep, deep, deep dive into them, you know, and looking for an edge you yeah looking always for an edge, looking right? for an edge but um you know i said yeah, yesterday yeah. i retired you know I, I wish i had the luxury to say i retired with enough money to live the rest of my life but i'm looking yeah. kind of at this next stage to maintain the money i have so you're still young you're still so yeah, young 51 51 feels like you're so young <laughs> but yeah i i really um you know, information wise, I think is where I was kind of going with the first part of that is I love to absorb information, but I've got good, to good. really learn to, to, I, I learned to control my emotions, but not until about a year ago. <laughs> so, Well, if, well, I, I, I'm, I haven't figured it yeah. out yet. Maybe you can tell me how to control. Well, emotions. I've been in That's some big, lifelong journey. big, big, big Bitcoin miner squeezes, you know, like the old spirit, sure. the old Mara squeezes, like, I really at the old yeah. any A N Y, you know, which was a total fraud. But, you know, a lot yeah. of these miners have gone bankrupt, you know, or they haven't done their their mergers. It's just been a mess. So I stepped back. But the the second part of this is uh, emotion wise. Yeah, I'm a lot better at it, you know, but I'm still not all the way there. Of course, I get real pumped up. So are you journaling with these trades? Um, well, I, I, I keep a spreadsheet. So I'm, I'm that's a log. School. That's a log. Yeah. That's the trading. Yeah, log. I've got a log. How about a, how about a trading journal? How about a trading? No, journal? but like, I really wish I sh- I would have. You know, I could, you should. That's my that's my fourth book. I'm I'm working yeah. on. It's a trading journal, and it talks about why, like what what should you fill out? Um, here's your trade idea. Yeah. Here's where, where it will fail. Here's how I'm feeling when I'm entering the trade. Right. So you have to force yourself to try to always be aware of your emotions. And that's like the first step, really. Yeah, towards... that's kind of a bummer. I didn't because, you know, when I entered spirit, I don't know if you remember that mega squeeze that went on with them. Um, it was just insanity, insanity. And, and I entered early because I had lo- I had done a lot of research on, you know, their filings, the company, you know, things like that. Sure. So <clears throat> excuse me, but. The, the second part of that that I'm getting to now is I'm kind of intrigued now with where a lot of these miners are going with the AI integration. So in my feeds, I'm Ooh. seeing a lot of the AI integration into the new chips. Like, I don't, I don't really know shit about it. I just, I'll, I'll sure. learn about it. But yeah. I'm very interested <laughs> where all of this AI data and, and back how it's going to integrate into crypto down mm. the line like um where is this going like i am just absolutely mesmerized by it and sure. i don't know sure. if you I have any some thoughts wonderful on Twitter. that well i have a couple thoughts the first thought is the cynic in me who's like you know it's the new web3 it's the new like buzzword that everyone's into but i mean you can't mess around i've seen i've also seen terminator so I'm not going to like dismiss the power of AI right. <laughs> and Skynet and all that. But um, but more seriously, um, you know, there's obviously some transpor- transformative or maybe disruptive power 
as, as business people like the entrepreneurs right, like talk about disruptive disruption. Um, you know, there's definitely some disruptive power in that, and to see how it changes things will be interesting. What you know, and with miners, I'm not sure exactly what you know how that will play out. Mm-hmm. With you know, interesting to see with like quant trading or trading systems or automating things. I mean, AI is crazy. Um, I'm actually so I'm actually thinking about writing. I am well, I'm writing a sci-fi novel too down the road. And I'm brainstorming that, and it's definitely going to be like, like. It's not good for humanity. Right. No, <laughs> like, I believe that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we already have like, you know, autom- automation of everything and like people like sub 100 IQ, like how do they get a job? Like just people need to work and like so like manual labor jobs going away and like all this stuff. I just I'm not like super hopeful um that it's all going to work out for just like regular like just normal people who like, you know, can't figure out how to ride the wave. Right. So, um I'm a little concerned. I'm a little hopeful, a little bit of everything, but I guess we got to wait and see. I don't know. Right. I just, I just find it super intriguing. Like I did back, I got, I got in on, I had per- perfect timing with the Bitcoin miners. Like I had bought, mm. I had bought, bought Mara originally under a dollar and jammed it wow. all the way to the top, you know? So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I just got, you know, I got lucky and I got interested right at the same time. And I didn't even really know how to trade back then. So I, I, I got in too early with a lot of the metaverse stocks, you know, yes, yes, and I, sure, lost, sure. I lost a nice little chunk of money, but uh, sure. I, I don't want to make the same mistake with some of the AI because it, you know, some of it is speculative also, you know, so I just don't, uh, th- it's the same thing with, you know, a lot of the shit coins that are out there. It's just speculation yeah. and people talking too. So, sure. well, I think there's probably some great spaces out there that can kind of dig into the fundamentals of AI yeah. and what it might mean. But um, I guess this ain't one of them. So, well, you're <laughs> gonna see me around a lot more because I feel like I'm back Good. in the game now. So, uh, Good. I took a couple of cruises this year and just chilled and relaxed. Where'd you go? Where'd you oh, go? Man. I went cruising too. Where'd you I go? I did uh, a Mexico cruise where it just went to like nice. Cozumel, Roatan. Yes. And then I just okay. did another one down to Cabo and uh, oh shit. Puerto Vallarta was amazing. We oh, we shit, missed yeah. the stop in Mazatlan because a cartel plane crashed in the port, so that was interesting. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so, Did you get lucky? How are the like with the cruise? It well, um, it's all about like um, a lot of it is like those sea days. Yeah. And like the weather and like how bumpy it is oh, and stuff, no. you know, because you can luck out or it can. Suck, These boats you know? are so different now. They build these like mega ships, and they're not yeah. even that. That's what I went on. I went on this giant floating city i was just it had 14 restaurants it's insane what how many people that's like five thousand. how many uh guests uh, on the ship 5800 and it never Jesus. felt crowded of course i paid for all the like perks and sweet stuff uh, I, of course it was of course. worth every nickel and they had starlink my internet was oh no shit really oh my god you, you said bitcoin live i I did. I just did a cruise in April, and I I did a video for Bitcoin Live, and I made the mistake of recording like a regular video, yeah. like a regular long video. It took like ten hours to upload. I was I was waiting till like five in the morning trying to upload yeah. it, and it was so. And we didn't have Starlink, so oh man. So, I wish yeah, we had these that. bigger ships, they've got the Starlink. You should hit a hit one with me in February. I got. We would have a blast. All right. Get the drink yeah. package and go to town. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, thanks, All Ted. Right. I really appreciate Thank you. it. You know, I, I enjoy. It. I'm back in the game. Woo-hoo. Good. That's it. Keep keep grinding. Okay. Thank you, buddy. All right. Thank you. I love it. All right. Let's get you, Matthias. We'll go one more time. We'll probably wrap it up. What would you like to say, Matthias? What's going on, buddy? Oh, I am, as I told you earlier, I am currently profitable, but I had a question about uh, trading strategies. Sure. Um, I kind of don't have like one specific strategy that I follow all the time because uh, if I only follow one very strict tra- strategy, I lose out on so mm-hmm. many opportunities. I wonder if you do the same thing or if you are really locked into like one system where you have to have like five things I don't like I don't even like the idea I don't even like the word system um you know uh no I really so a little I mean no I so what I do is I wait for the price to clearly define a level for me and then I wait for the price to interact with that level and ideally it gets there with volatility right so I wait for volatility 
right? And then I wait for the price to interact with the key level. And then I'll kind of drop to, you know, I'll just use my, just the stuff I've learned is I'll drop to lower time frame with the price at a key level and I'll, and I'll, I'll scale into my position. I'll manage my stop losses and I'll define my risk. But I don't necessarily have like a system where it's, I don't like, cause it seems kind of um, like, uh, what is the word I'm, <sighs> hokey or what is the word I'm thinking of? It's a little bit too gimmicky. You know, like the idea of a system. I think you should have, your system should just be trend analysis. Yeah. It should literally just be simple. It should be trend analysis. I believe a combination of Eastern and Western TA, candlestick analysis and classical charting and um, patience and waiting for price interaction with the key. Le- that's my system is waiting for the price to interact with the key level. That's like, that's my system. You know? Yes, I, I do kind of the same thing. I Right now I do trade ranges and uh, trend lines. Mm-hmm. And uh, I always kind of key out yeah. my areas and just see how it reacts. And I I usually act either way. If it acts the wrong way that I intend, I do my uh, mm-hmm. analysis again. And then I, most of the time I can actually enter the opposite way of what I thought I was going to. And it still mm-hmm. kind of works out. Uh, it works out most of the time. Well, look, keep experimenting, which is good. Um, you know, experiment with smaller positions. So you can get that experience. I would say with trend lines, be careful. Cause like, like the, the, the thing to realize with a trend line is there is no line. There's only a trend. Like the, there's no actual line. Like you don't trade the line. The, the trend line is just to illustrate a general trend of price movement. So that's why you want to focus on horizontal structure clearly defined levels horizontally that's what classical charting teaches you so i'd say really be careful with trend lines and understand there's really no line there's actually just a trend i think i misspoke a little i use uh, trend lines in my ranges to kind of identify which way uh, everything is going yeah no no sure i was just kind of i was just kind of going off in that tangent yeah i totally um, agree with you it's uh, it's not smart at all (laughs) good well good man keep on keep on grinding i'm glad you um you joined us today okay yeah thanks a lot Thank you, man. I'm going to wrap it up, folks. I'm going to do another Spaces tomorrow. I'll do another Spaces Thursday. I'm going to do another Spaces Friday. I'm going to do another Spaces Saturday. I'm going to do another Spaces Sunday and maybe Monday. And then I'll probably take a break. Uh, why am I doing all these Spaces? It's the five-year anniversary for Bitcoin Live. I'm the best-in-class educational platform for crypto. I'm a founding analyst. I'm part of a world-class team. I believe the best team in the world that studies crypto. Um, if you don't believe me, go check out who's there. Um, I do a twice a week full market update Wednesday and Sunday night. Um, right now you can join, you get your first three months for $27 is ridiculous. Uh, it's just kind of crazy, crazy not to try it out. Um, that's Bitcoin live. That's why I'm doing all these spaces. I'll be on YouTube again tonight. I'll be on YouTube Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then maybe Monday night as well. I am on Twitter at big cheds. I'm on YouTube at Cheds Trading. Check out the Masterclass Technical Analysis um, Playlist. Three beginner, one advanced um, webinar. Check those out. Tons of great free alpha. I'm the author of Trading Wisdom, 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. I'm also the author of Trading Quotes. I published that back in December. Um, Trading Wisdom has been very popular. You can get a third of that book for free on my YouTube at Cheds Trading. So make sure to check that out. This spaces will eventually be uploaded to the Twitter Spaces playlist on my YouTube. So um, I want to thank you all for being part of it. I want to thank you all for adding value. Um, It's the questions, it's the comments, it's the feedback, it's the back and forth, which add value for the folks who are listening. If you were listening and you did not request to speak, I see many of you, um, please consider next time stepping up. I'd love to hear from you, Um, especially people who've never spoken before. I'd love to hear from you. I want to hear what you're thinking, you're feeling, what your questions are. Um, And I would just encourage you, I would implore you, I would ask you to join the conversation next time. Um, So look for me tomorrow. I'll do another one of these. I hope to see you there and I hope you um, will step up and join the conversation. I'm going to go shoot some hoops, get my blood flowing. I've been sitting around for a while. So folks, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I will talk to you soon. Big Cheds out. Yo, yo, yo. Episode 35. (laughs) <laughs> Peace. Episode 35 of the Twitter Spaces. Again, uh, check out my books on Amazon, Trading Wisdom, Trading Quotes, um, and check out Bitcoin Live. Folks, I'm going to um, 
get get these spaces updated, and then I'll do a, I'm gonna do a uh, a live stream at some point soon. So I'll talk to you later. Big Chad's out.